Today, I want to show you how to create these really cool transitions in After Effects. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. In today's video I want to dive deeper into the Luma Mask transition effect in After Effects. I've used this method in an animated poster for a client a couple of months back and I really liked how much creativity you have when you use this Luma Matte transition. So all you need to know for now is what the Luma Matte does is essentially the same as masking in Photoshop. You use a mask layer which is black and white and wherever in that mask the colors are white the image is visible. Now in Photoshop you can paint in this mask and stuff but in After Effects of course you can animate this. So first of all I'm going to show you an example of a Luma mask that I made. Then I'm going to show you how I apply this and use this as a transition. And then I'm going to dive deeper into a specific technique that I use in order to create these cool Luma Matte transitions. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. Alright, so here is the Luma Mask composition. And something important to note here is, as you can see, the composition starts out fully white and it ends up fully black. This is quite important for transition because you might have already guessed at this point, nothing is visible from one of the layers. Around here, some parts are invisible and around the end, the first part of the video is completely invisible. So let me show you based on a couple of random pieces of footage, what that looks like when it's applied. As you can see, as we scrub through, you can kind of see the text of your logo as well as the animated figure in the middle. As it expands, you see that more of the underlying footage becomes visible. So it's really simple to set up. Let's just, so as you can see, we just have two pieces of footage on top of one of each other. Next, let's drop in the Luma Mask composition on the end result layer, which is the top layer. I'm gonna click on Track Math, Luma Mask, and then basically we're going to make sure that this one is Luma Matte selected and we can invert this one. Or you don't have to invert this one depending on whatever your preference is of course. But basically this does the exact opposite as you can see here. And don't worry, your Luma Mask is still in the composition, it's just made invisible. But as you can see, basically it just grabs the black and white values of a composition and uses that to mask something out. Fairly easy, right? Now, of course, you can create really easy ones where you basically wipe from black to white or something like that. Uh, but I want to show you my specific workflow in order to create these expanding logos. So, let me just show you what this looks like without any effects applied to it, other than, you know, some motion. That's all there is to it, basically. The text comes in from the bottom and the spinning figure is spinning and it scales up from 0 to 15% and just keeps spinning. And I've also checked on motion blur, but you don't really need to do that in this case, I guess. Um, anyways, I used two different but very similar adjustment layers. One of them I applied to the spinning figure and one of them I applied to both of those. So let's start out with the expanding blur and transforming threshold. So this basically only applies to the figure here. Uh, but as you can see, what we've done here is we've added a Gaussian blur, a transform and a threshold. Let's open up the animation so you can kind of see what I've done here. Uh, so there's not much going on for the first two seconds. And from two seconds out, we're, we're gonna see a little bit of change in here. So what I essentially do is I blur this thing even more and keep note that we have a white background here. Uh, this doesn't really work if you have a transparent background. Anyways, uh, the Gaussian blur basically goes from 0 to 100, basically making this thing almost invisible. Um, that's where the threshold actually comes in. Um, the threshold, if you don't know, basically makes something either a completely black or a completely white value and the level of the threshold is basically where that middle ground is the threshold of course 
So as you can see, I increased this from level 200 all the way up to 254, which is the maximum value where you can still see white. So let me just show you basically what it does when you have something blurred. You can, depending on how large your blur is, shrink and grow a shape. So that's it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And of course, when it starts to be blurry, uh, you can see that it kind of melts into these four larger parts of the shape and they slowly grow together into forming one bigger shape. And this is all, of course, uh, just so I can fill up everything with black. And with the transform applied to that, basically I make the shape zoom in a little bit more, which causes to cover up more of the screen. Uh, as you can see, there is a couple of like pixel things going on. And that's basically just because of the threshold. This is a pixelized image, the spinning figure. Uh, and due to the threshold uh, being that harsh, it'll basically just pixelate the edges of your image, which is where the final blurring and the other uh, Gaussian blur uh, layer comes in. So if we make this visible as well, you can see that it has been smoothed out a little bit. And all that this thing is really doing is basically, basically doubling it with a Gaussian blur. And rather than using a threshold here, I use a levels to crunch in the black and white. So as you can see, this is what it looks like with the other uh, Gaussian blur on top of this. This also blurs the text, as you can see. And it goes from 0 to... 50 and then from 50 to 100 basically i can just delete this one so it basically takes two seconds uh, to go from the zero blurriness to the 100 blurriness and then with the levels adjustment what i did was i basically made the blacks or the gray values more black and more white crunching them and creating this really harsh contrast let's just go back to the setting that i first had which is around here and what this also coincidentally does to our pixelized parts is smoothen this out because as you can see without the levels this is basically just blurring out these pixely edges that you saw and by crunching this you can basically smoothen out the edges of your pixelized stuff if that happens because of the threshold so i'm going to show you one more example of this in the client project that i've shown you in the beginning of the video here basically it starts blurring and it shrinks down in order to reveal the actual logo. And to add in a little bit more motion, I use some turbulent displays here. And then I scale the logo up. And I basically, again, add more blur to this, which lets this thing grow. And all the while I basically do the exact same thing but in the opposite way with the text. So the text starts out really blurry, so blurry that you cannot really see it. And then it becomes white, which in the end results in this, like you can't really see the video because I lost it as you can see, but it basically makes this smooth transition from the animated flyer to where it reveals the logo. And I also use some color overlays in order to make sure that this is colored blue and this is colored yellow so yeah guys i hope this video was useful i hope i gave you an idea on what luma mad masks are all about and how you can create some really cool transitions with them the possibilities are nearly endless so i would say just get creative and show me whatever you make using this method if you have any questions suggestions for new tutorials or if you want to share anything else leave it down in the comments below. Leave a like on this video and a subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already, because I have a channel with over 100 tutorials if you're interested. As always, the After Effects file can be found in the description down below, which leads to my Patreon channel, on which for just five bucks, you can get access to over 100 project files from all of the tutorials that I've released so far. The rotational shape that I've used in this video, which comes from the Dread Shapes Volume 3, is available on my website dreadlabs.net, which contains tons of other textures, assets, and other goodies that you can use in your creative work. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.